Drop a comment down below. Jordan Adler here, checking in with you tonight from Las Vegas. Uh, this is our weekly team training. And tonight I wanna to talk to you a little bit about working from home. It's the greatest, I love it. Uh, I can remember the, um, the anxiety and the, uh, just the, 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 the icky feeling. I hate to use that word, but that's what it was that I had going into my cubicle every day. I did that for many years. 17 years I had a cubicle. I think there was one time for a very short time that I had an office it maybe lasted for about three weeks. But for the most part, I had a cubicle starting from when I was 21 years old all the way into my 30s. And um, hey, thank God I had a job. But uh, during that time, I remember the politics. I remember just really, really wanting so badly to work from home. And I can remember some of the early challenges. I've been working from home now as a full-time network marketer. I don't even like to use the word full-time because in the job world, in the network marketing world, um, full time could be four hours a day, and and you might, you know, you could be made, you could be in the beginning, you could be working a whole bunch of hours and making very little money, to be making a whole bunch of money and working very little. So that phrase full time is a little deceptive because it's a it's a phrase that really applies to the job world. But I've been uh, a, a successful home based entrepreneur now for. 24 years, something like that, since 1996, if I'm calculating correctly. Some of my early challenges, I remember back then there were no cell phones. And, you know, I was, um, I was traveling across the country um, in the early days to meet with people, which I still do today, but nothing like I did back then, sometimes during winter months and blizzards and, um, you know, renting cars and driving to meetings and um, you know, traveling all the way across the country for a meeting where only one or two people showed up. I remember um, having to stop the car and uh, go to a pay phone to make calls to set up appointments, leaving messages on answering machines. And that was considered a home-based business, even though the truth is, back then it wasn't a home. It was based, I guess, in the home, but, you know, you spent very little time at home. Uh, but that's what we called it. We called it a home-based business. Um, but truthfully, it wasn't a home-based business. We were going to meetings two or three nights a week. I remember doing three meetings a week in Phoenix, Arizona. Some of you will remember those days where we were doing a Tuesday, a Wednesday, and a Thursday night meeting in different parts of Phoenix every single week. So I wasn't home in the evenings. It's different today with Zoom and all the technology we have today. Um, staying motivated as a home-based entrepreneur is, it can be tough for some people. For many people, for probably for most people, uh, because you don't have somebody to hold you accountable. So it's easy to get sidetracked. Um, staying, uh, for me though, I, I did not ever, I shouldn't say I never had trouble staying motivated, but for me, the desire, the drive to be a home based entrepreneur and to have a residual income and to call my own shots and to work when I want to and to you know, be able to make the choices that come around, you know, when you, when you have the options because you have a residual income stream, those were far stronger for me than it, those kept, those things kept me motivated. But I understand for a lot of people, unless you have somebody holding you accountable or a place to go, it's tough to stay motivated. And then, in, you know, if you're in a roommate situation, for many years, I was in a roommate situation where I had other people and then, you know, you're, you're doing calls with people and they're listening and you wonder if they're judging you because they're not in the business. They had no interest in the business, you know, those kinds of things. Um, also, I remember back then, um, you know, things have changed because today there's some status with working from home. But back then, if you, um, if you didn't have a business card, you weren't considered legit. And if you didn't have your address on your business card, you weren't considered legit. And if you put your home address on a business card, people would drive by to see what kind of place you lived in, and they would judge you based on that. If you didn't have an office, then you weren't considered legit. So things were a little bit different back then. But I got to tell you, there's benefits to working from home. And many of you are on the journey to be able to do that, to be able to work 100% of your time from home so you can spend time with your kids, spend time with your grandkids, be able to work when you want to. See that little helicopter right there flying? Um, 
extremely low overhead compared to most traditional businesses. You know, most businesses, uh, it's not uncommon for a traditional business to have overhead of anywhere from 5,000 a month to some of you have had overhead over a hundred thousand dollars a month. I have many, many friends and in network marketing, because you're working in your apartment or your condo or your home, the overhead is extremely low. And that's one of the huge benefits of working from home. Another thing is you control your own schedule. Now that can be good or that can be tough because you've got a TV and a couch and a refrigerator. They're all close by. And in some ways they compete with your energy and what you need to focus on to have success in your home-based business. So those are things that you need to be aware of that, that, that those things can ultimately take over the time, uh, your couch, your TV, your refrigerator, and then just all the other demands on our life. Um, one of the things I love about having a home-based business is it's a one minute commute. And again, that's a good thing, but it's a, a tough thing as well because you know, you're right there, but it's where you live. And sometimes it's hard. Like I said, it's hard to be motivated. Today, we have uh, technology at our fingertips with the ability to do Zoom and Facebook Live and the ability to get information out quickly through Facebook. And, you know, back um, in the early, early days, before conference calling, you had to actually physically meet someone in person in order to give them an overview. You know, we are so blessed today with the technology that we have today because literally for free in a matter of seconds, there was even a point for networked voicemail, which was kind of like email only through voicemail where um, we paid monthly for that. And it was like $200 a month. And the bigger your team got, the more people that you had on it, we got to the point where we we're paying two or $3,000 a month just to be able to send a message out and have it go out to everybody. This was before email and um, all those kinds of things. And today, with the technology, it's just so easy. It's so easy to take it for granted as well. We have that technology right at our fingertips. I mean, I, I schedule this, it's free. I can, I can schedule it and, and be on a Zoom with you in a matter of seconds, and it doesn't cost me anything to do that. Um, Facebook is free. What an incredible tool. Instagram, free. There's tax benefits. You know, one of the things is you've got equipment around your home, like your your telephone, your computer, um, uh, things that you've got around your home that you, use, that you use to support your business that can become tax write-offs, which can lower your tax liability. And so you want to talk to an accountant about that. So you only, so if you're working in a, if you've got a room that's dedicated to your office and that room is how you build your business, if you build your business from that room, you, based on your tax bracket, you can deduct a certain percentage of that. So talk to your accountant about that. You know, a lot of my trips, you know, I was in Poland and that was for BNI. And so, you know, my flight there to Poland and, and part of the trip, a lot of the, a lot of the stuff that I was doing there is a tax write-off where the money that I make, I don't have to pay taxes on that because it's, it's, you, it's you write it off against the expenses and then you only pay taxes on the difference, the profit. So, so it gives me a way to write off some of my vacations as long as there's some business being done. Um, so there's tax benefits and there's actually really great little short books that are written about that. And if you don't, you know, get an accountant. Um, one of my greatest investments early, early on was a, a good tax accountant that likes network marketing that understands network marketing. And so um, today we truly do have a home-based business. Whereas back when I got started, we called it a home-based business, but it really wasn't a home-based business. And the feeling of not having to go to a job every day is a great feeling and it's worth the fight. It's worth the hard work that you need to put in up front to get to a point where maybe you don't have to go to a job anymore. One of the things that my mentors, uh, Jay and Meg Smith, told me early, early on was to not leave my job too soon. You know, a lot of times people, when they start making a little bit of money, they say, you know what, I'm going to do this full time. And that ultimately can be a mistake uh, for an entrepreneur if you leave too soon because you get desperate and it's very difficult to build a business in a desperate situation. So uh, I want to talk, I want to read to you. But first of all, I want to talk about the drawbacks, the drawbacks to having a home-based business. We talked a little bit about that. 
but obviously some of the drawbacks are, you know, your distractions like Dr. Phil, Fox News, CNN News. It's addicting. It's easy to turn the TV on and one to two to three hours later, you realize that time could have been built, used to build your future. You know, you can accomplish a lot on one or two hours a day if you just unplug your TV set. I had my TV set unplugged for 25 years and I truly believe that I'm in the position I am today as a result of being able, being able to make that sacrifice. And it really truthfully isn't a sacrifice. sacrifice. And there's so much good content today with Netflix and Amazon Prime and Hulu and, and you know, there's sports and there's great talk shows and there's the news stations and there's so much stuff out there to consume. And then the days go by and the weeks go by and the months go by and then the years go by and we're nowhere near where we really wanted to be. Imagine your dream life. What is it? You know, is it worth it? for you to give up that stuff that's just sucking up your time, that leaves you no better off, you know, one or two years from now, then if you would just set that aside, it's still gonna be there, it's not going away, and really dedicating and focusing, you know, one to three hours a day, every single day on productive activities. I wanna read something to you that I wrote uh, a little while ago on distractions. I'm just gonna read it directly from my screen. This is probably the biggest one. Besides having the television set within reach, and you know that Dr. Phil is on, and the latest tragedy being featured on CNN, there are kids wanting your attention, your kids, not to mention you get a UPS delivery from Amazon with your newest outfit or gadget. It's just too easy to get sidetracked. You have to manage your distractions to make it in this business. And I recognize that the distractions are real. You know, I, ha I suggest having a space with a door that you can close if at all possible and set aside focused time to work your business uninterrupted, even if it's 30 minutes a day, or even if you have to go out to your car and sit in your car for 30 minutes with your smartphone or your computer to do your business then, just to get away from the noise or away from whatever distractions are keeping you from working. Um, the smartphone technology can work with this with the new smartphone technology we can work the business from the living room from the kitchen even while you're waiting to pick up your kids at school and even today from an airplane and you will do that but your most productive time will be the 30 minutes to two hours that you set aside with real focus you may need to get rid of your TV if you're an addict or at the very least, don't ever have one in the room when you're doing your work. No TV in the room when you're doing your work, which is hard to do. Your TV is your mo most prolific time killer. It'll kill your business, it's invasive, and it's addicting. And I've heard it's the number one reason why most people don't make it in the business. A simple decision to remove the TV from your life for the next five years. I, did, I got rid of mine for 25 years. I put a little TV in the closet, and then eventually I gave it to Goodwill and I did not have a TV set for 25 years. And those were the 25 years I built my residual income and my network and my relationships to a point where nothing could stop me. So use that time to listen to positive personal development, set appointments, give presentations. In five years, when you have a big residual income, you'll be traveling the world and not wanting to veg out in front of the TV set. I'm, um, I, I spent a lot of time sitting up at the Mount Charleston Lodge, putting these calls together at my home up there, and I'm by myself, and I'm extremely focused with no distractions. Again, as a business owner, it's my job to manage my time. So if you feel like you're constantly being yanked out of your zone by a distraction, then it means you need to do a better job of protecting your business and the time that you spend on it. So for some people, being alone, building the business works really well. And for other people, it's a motivation killer. And one of, I'm kind of in between. There are times where I do really well, really focused, sending out messages to people, setting up appointments, but I also need my weekly BNI time. That's the time that I get together with my network and 
there are times where I'm feeling down or not feeling super motivated, and that's all I need to do. I get on an airplane and go to my BNI meeting in Phoenix, and when I walk in the room, that's all it takes to bring me back because there's so many networking opportunities and opportunities to meet people and connect people and, and um, opportunities to present. Um, for some of you, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, necessity to get people together in the Send Out Cards organization with potential Send Out Cards customers or potential Send Out Cards affiliates and do that on a regular basis, whether it be monthly or twice a month or once a week. For some of you, that's essential. And if you're one of those people that you're just not feeling inspired every week to build the business, then that might be something you want to look at. And at the very least, maybe just getting together with five or six people online once a week and talk about the opportunities and talk about ways that you can take your send out cards business to a new level. It's always easier to do nothing. There's always something that's more important. And so it's about really making it a priority. In the, it, it needs to be building your send out cards business. We all have different priorities, but building your send out cards business needs to be one of the top three priorities in your life. And even Cody needs to time block. I need to time block in order to build my business because if I, if I don't do that, then things don't get done. So there's certain times during the day that I've got blocked off of my, on my calendar that I'm going to be focused on doing something to move my business forward. I'm always asking myself, you've heard me say this before, who's next? That's the most important question that I can ask. Who's the next person that I'm gonna present to? Who's the next person I'm gonna train? Who's the next person I'm gonna add to my list? Who's the next person I'm gonna send a card to? Who's the next person I'm gonna set up an appointment with? I'm always looking at who's next and I've got my green book and my black book and I'm constantly going through the black book saying, who do I need to follow up with? And I'm constantly going through my green book saying, who do I need to set up an appointment with? I just met two other, two new people the other night at a party that I was at and I exchanged uh, phone numbers with them and we exchanged text messages and um, we're, I told them I want to get together with them for sushi or something uh, just to get to know them. They live together a couple and uh, we're going to get together. I really liked them. And I have no idea if we'll do, be doing business together, but I've got them now on my list. And uh, so we're going to either become really good friends or we're going to become acquaintances or possibly we'll become friends and ultimately do business together or they may become my customers. Who knows? So working from home is amazing. You have your life. You, ha you own your freedom when you're working from home. You work when you want to. You get to call your own shots. It's freeing, it's liberating, if you have the residual income. But in order to get there, you've got to set aside the time over a long period of time to focus on the things that will grow your business. And you know what? It doesn't matter what kind of biz business you're growing. The, the, the sacrifices, if you want to call that, the, you want to call them the opportunities that you have are the same. I watched a, um, an interview last night with the guy that, invented the my pillow you see that guy on i'm talking about tv right but you don't watch tv anymore right but the guy that, that that invented that pillow and he was talking about you know how he how he built that in the early days you know how he traveled around the country going to all these different opportunity shows around the country at the state fairs and things like that and today he's a billionaire but he made sacrifices along the way you can even work on your vacations. I love working on my vacations. You know, I play hard when I'm on vacation. We'll go out and do four-wheel driving. We'll rent Jeeps and go out and do four-wheel driving in Costa Rica. We'll, um, you know, go to the, the lava, the, um, the, the volcanoes and rub hot mud all over our bodies uh, by the, what do they call that? The, um, where the volcano steam is everything coming out of the, the ground, you know, we'll do that. We'll go zip lining in the jungle. You know, we'll do all that fun stuff, but then we'll spend a couple hours a day with our internet, sending cards and, and um, setting up some appointments, maybe doing some Zooms. I'll be on, a lot of times I'll be on the Monday call, but it might be at 2.30 in the morning, but I'm gonna do some work while I'm traveling. And so uh, ask anyone that's been working from home for four years or more. Ask them if they like it. 
And you know what? They're going to smile and they're going to tell you that they love it. They would never go back by choice. I love seeing the countless families on Facebook that have grown up with home based in a home based business. Uh, there are so many today. It wasn't that way when I was getting started. Today, you look online and there are thousands of families that have raised their kids working in a home based business. Do you know that there's entrepreneurs out there that make a half a million dollars a year or a million dollars a year that they go to a, 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 a job or a, a corporate uh, maybe they're a, a CFO or a or they're 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 an executive for a big company and they have to go to work every day and you know they're working 12 to 14 hours a day and they would give up that big salary for a home-based business that paid them ten or fifteen thousand dollars a month there are multiple entrepreneurs like that I've seen surveys so I love seeing the countless families the thousands of families that work from home that have been working from home for many years that and their kids have grown up in that you know i look at todd and carla falcone their kids have grown up in an entrepreneurial family i look at the challenge tom and kim challen their kids have grown up in an entrepreneurial family or tony and um uh sarah zalecki and there's there's i could go on and on i could margie alaprendi so many families even cody bateman his family's grown up in an entrepreneurial family now he doesn't work from home he goes to a, uh, an office, but you get, you, you understand what I'm talking about. Um, people that have done that, they would never go back. They're happier. They're more fulfilled. They call their own shots. They get more time with each other. They get more time with their family. Uh, they have more flexibility with their schedules. And imagine what your life would be like as you continue to grow your residual income, getting your residual to a point where it equals your bills. What would your life be like? when your residuals equal, equal your bills after working your business for a number of years? What would your life be like? There, it's, it's, it's better. I'm just gonna tell you that, it's better. So, so with that, how are we doing on time? It's about five minutes till. I guess I went on a little rant there. I love working from home and it was worth the sacrifices that I made and I don't, I don't look at them as sacrifices. I look at them as entrepreneurs, uh, uh, as opportunities. And um, yeah, so, I, and I gotta tell you, you know, I just want, this is very important. I want you to know that it's just numbers. It's just zeros and, and decimal points. That's all it is. It's just numbers. That's all you need to do is go, you know, what's, what's the potential? Like look at the number of people out there that have never heard of send out cards, the number of people out there that don't have the send out cards app on their phone. There have been 50 million people that have turned 19 in the past 10 years. I've been around this company for 15 years. There are so many people that don't know anything about this. And we have people signing up on the $97 unlimited plan in droves right now. There's a big opportunity, but it's gonna require you to step back look at the big picture of your life, figure out what is, it, what is it that's important to you as we move into the new year and start carving out the time that's necessary to create it. This is within reach for most of you, those of you that are willing to do the work. And really, when you distill it down, it just comes down to those three S's. It's sending cards every day, scheduling appointments every day, and showing it every day and then teaching other people to do the same. That's all we do in Send Out Cards. So I'm excited about the new year. We've got a little ways to go before the new year. I know we're just entering into December, but uh, things are heating up fast, and uh, I'm just appreciative to be working with you. We're really blessed and fortunate to be working together, and uh, that's the call for tonight. I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye-bye.